Here is a melt of ordinary wax. It is quite liquid and runs freely. This melt is not nearly so mobile. It has a high viscosity. This material is a short chain linear polyethylene. Now look at this melt of a cross-linked polyethylene. It is rubbery. In fact, the polyethylene in this state is actually a rubber, not a very useful one, but nevertheless a rubber. Rubber molecules can be understood by watching what happens to these beads in this tank of water. They can be agitated somewhat randomly by the water jets at the corners of the tank. The rubber molecule is characterized by its giant length and freedom of movement. Thermal motion tends to cause the ends of the molecule to draw together, as you see here. Since this is so, stretch rubber contracts when it is heated, instead of expanding as most materials do. Here is a rubber band which is being stretched so that it balances a weight. When the rubber is immersed in hot water, it shrinks. And when it is put in cold water, it expands. This simulation of the rubber molecule provides a way to explain the behavior of rubber shown in the previous demonstration. The disorder caused by thermal agitation or heat makes the ends of the giant rubber molecule draw together. If order is imposed on such a chain by pulling its ends, it gives up energy, or heat, and raises the temperature of its surroundings. Then when the ends are released, energy is absorbed, and the temperature of the surroundings falls. Stretching releases heat, contraction absorbs heat, this can be demonstrated. The glass bead contains a device to measure small changes in temperature. Heat makes the pointer swing to the right. Now, as the rubber is stretched, heat is released and the temperature of the bead rises. When it contracts, heat is absorbed and the temperature of the bead falls. Now a second chain is added to the tank. It also draws in its ends and the two chains soon entangle. If one end of each chain is pulled, they slide past each other and are separated. When released, it takes some time and substantial agitation before the chains entangle again. Likewise, pulling this uncured rubber makes it flow or deform. It does not recover completely because the molecules slide past one another just as the beads did. Here is a cured or vulcanized sample. It is tough because its molecular chains are chemically bonded together or cross-linked. These beads have been cross-linked to make a single chain. Agitation still causes the cross-linked chains to contract. But pulling on their ends does not cause much flow. Now, the molecule retracts when released, just as did the single chain. Some cross-linking thus inhibits permanent deformation, without seriously interfering with the coiling caused by agitation. Cross-linked rubber is strong, as this tensile test shows. The sample's resistance to stress increases steadily up to the point of rupture.
Here is a stress strain curve. Stress resistance remained quite low, up to about 500% elongation. Then resistance increased substantially. This second curve is for a branch polyethylene. The tensile strength of the rubber just before fracture is actually higher than the plastic. Part of this strength is due to the crosslinks. However, introducing too many crosslinks results in a hard, stiff rubber. All the desirable elastic properties are eliminated. Hard rubber is permanently set during curing and is therefore called a thermosetting material. Clearly, the giant size of rubber molecules and the freedom of each molecule to contract or stretch out have a great deal to do with the unusual properties of rubber.